So you might have missed it, but there was some pretty big news that dropped on Friday about income-driven repayment, and it could save you a whole lot of money because the Department of Education has decided to put off certification of income-driven repayment for a very long time. So effectively, Department of Education is dealing with FAFSA. They don't have a lot of resources to handle things right now. And the servicers were really confusing everybody by asking for income information months ahead of when they were supposed to. So your servicer might have reached out in January, for example, for a IDR payment that didn't need to be recertified until as late as March. And that's really confusing. That's never been discussed as to why they would be doing that. So what the servicers were doing really was not following Department of Education guidance. So Department of Ed basically said, well, we don't want to deal with this problem right now. We've got other things going on, like the FAFSA that's a real disaster that we need everybody to focus on. And because this is going to save borrowers money, because we can, because we're going into an election season, because we don't have the resources to help the servicers figure this out, we're just going to push the IDR recertification date until no earlier than September 2024. So what does this mean depending on when you took out loans, right? If you graduated during the pandemic – then you will have recertified on an IDR payment that is uh, something that happened during the pandemic, obviously. So you didn't use your you know, tax return from several years ago pre-pandemic to certify. You certified during the pandemic. So if that's you, you know, you haven't had to recertify since then. You'll keep that payment until at least September 2024. Now, if you were paying on an IDR plan before COVID, you were probably recertified using the 2018 or 2019 tax return that you had when you last certified. So that payment also lasts until at least September 2024. Now, what does that mean? Is that a good thing? Well, what if your income went down, for example? If your income went down, you can recertify early at studentaid.gov slash IDR. So that's a good thing. In other words, if it helps you, you can lower your payment by simply you know, getting your income recertified. Now, if your income went up, you're not obligated to let them know until your IDR recertification date it happens. So, for example, this could be, uh, let's say your certification date was supposed to be June of 2024. The way Department of Ed has done this in the past is whenever they push the deadline for recertification, whenever they have a date after which, you know, you know, you'll have to recertify, they always push anybody's dates before that deadline forward uh, an entire year. That's how they've done it consistently since, really, they started pushing these IDR recertification dates. So very consistently, this is how they've always done it. So there's technically nothing in the official guidance that I can see where it says that they'll push it out a whole year, but this is the way they've always done it, so we expect that they're going to continue to do that. So let's say in extreme case, your recertification date is 9-1-2024. Your new recertification date, once the dust settles, should be 9-1-2025. Now that's pretty staggering. That's a long time before you have to recertify, right? What does all this do? Well, it could save you a lot of money. So let's just pretend that the last time you recertified was with a very small income, or maybe you were a student the last time you recertified and you had a low income or no income, and let's say your required payment is zero a month. That, I think, is a real big reason why the majority of people on the same plan are paying zero dollars a month. I don't think it's because people are making a very, very small income in, in most cases. I think it's mostly because there's a whole lot of people that last recertified when they were students or in their first year after graduation when they only earned income part of the year or when they were in training or something like that, right? So it's a huge money-saving benefit to borrowers that they're putting off this IDR recertification date. And you know, as the state goes later and later and later, it's saving borrowers more and more money, right? This is something the Department of Education, frankly, just thinks that they can get away with and save borrowers money. The people at Department of Ed and this administration are geniuses with manipulating the rules to help borrowers. Because this is something that, you know, it's income-driven repayment, right? It's supposed to be based off of your most recent tax return. Well, there's all kinds of loopholes, right? And the Department of Ed is certainly using their loopholes to try to help borrowers. Now, when Department of Ed says that they're going to ask you to recertify no earlier than September 2024, you know, that very, very likely means that they will push it past the election when they're going to ask you for your income information. Why? Well, they have to give servicers three months to start reaching out to borrowers to let them know that their payment's going to be changing. So if you have a recertification date in late April, they'd have to start asking you about it three months before that, right? So August, July, June. So you'd have to start asking people in June or telling people in June for give us your income info so we can recertify your payment that's happening in October, let's say, or July, you'd reach out for payment changing in October. Now think about this. Do you want any borrowers having an increasing payment in October or November before the election? 
yes or no? If you're the White House, the answer is no. Now, does it cost you anything politically to push the state later? Probably not. That means that the very likely thing that this White House will do is push that September 2024 date <clears throat> even later. And importantly, borrowers can't be asked within three months for income information. So if you say that recertification date is December, then go, you know, basically that's one month. November is another month. October is another month. So even if they chose December 2024 as the earliest date you'll be asked to recertify, then they'd have, they'd have to ask you for income information as early as October, right before the election, which they're also not going to want to do. Now, the way this White House also operates is they announce stuff on student loans at the last second. So that means we probably will see some sort of announcement maybe in August or September. They're pushing that IDR recertification date even later. Now, that could keep your payment very low even longer. So that's how it could benefit you. Now, what is the chances? what are the chances that if, you know, so first of all, if President Biden wins, you will see more student loan relief stuff like this probably, right? Now, if, you know, President Trump wins, then, you know, think about everything that the Biden administration has done on student loan rules. It's been bending the rules, pushing to the max, trying to get borrowers relief, trying to cancel debt, trying to do a lot of things that help student loan borrowers financially at what is, you know, any reasonable person would say is a large, you know, purchase or ticket price, right? $138 billion and counting. So it's quite likely if you see a Republican administration that a lot of these programs that President Biden has put in place are going to get curtailed or even repealed. So we do have to think about things like if you had a Republican president, would you have a recertification that would happen much faster for, of income? Would you have the save plan get repealed? Would you have any of these you know, initiatives that are reversed? I don't think you would see anything reversed, but I do think you would see stuff that is repealed or changed. And I think you would see a lot more aggressive uh, attempts to get borrowers paying more money if you had to switch an administration that way. So we'll be monitoring it for you. If you check out Student Loan Planner or follow Student Loan Planner, you'll find out all the latest tips and student loan analysis that will help you save as much money as possible. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.